I think the, the essence of my presentation or my part of the debate uh, at the meeting is to sort of make the case um, that one size does not fit all and that for younger transplant eligible patients we now have a number of trials which support the role in selected patients of induction remission treatment achieving complete response confirming MRD negativity, harvesting stem cells, and keeping transplant in reserve, particularly if these patients have standard risk features in terms of their disease. Because most importantly, we've seen in the, for example, the determination trial, that in that population who are standard risk, MRD negative, outcomes with early versus delayed transplant appear to be the same in terms of overall survival. Uh, and above all, that in that context, patients can be spared some of the challenges of early toxicity from melphalan, which can revolve around not only a major quality of life um, change across the transplant itself, although recovery then follows, but I guess even as important are the acute toxicities of the transplant, but moreover the later ones, because one of the things we saw in the determination trial was a difference in the rates of secondary AML and MDS, and whilst definitely very low overall, the reality was there were 10 cases in the early transplant arm versus none at the time of our data analysis in the delayed transplant arm, and that was a significant difference. That's a small number, obviously, but it does help us in making choices around um, treatments for patients that if they want to be spared the transplant potentially early and use it in reserve if they have to, that option is there for them. But I think the important point I'm making in the early transplant versus delayed transplant argument is that patients have choices, and these data support that as those options being explored rather than a sort of one-size-fits all. And, and we also have to recognize, though, that in different healthcare systems, the availability of novel therapies is key. And this is an important caveat to the message. If you are in a healthcare jurisdiction where access to next generation novel therapies is relatively straightforward, then the delayed transplant uh, approach, if it's an appropriate uh, choice for you, makes a great deal of sense because these treatments are there for you to, 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 to provide salvage. What we showed in the determination trial is that only 28% of the patients on the delayed transplant so far have had a transplant, 72% had other therapies, and yet survival with relatively mature follow-up was identical. So with all of that in mind, recognizing we still need more follow-up, of course, for survival in an upfront study, we do clearly do these days, all of that being said, um, given the fact these novel therapies were able to successfully salvage patients, keeping transplant in reserve is reasonable for selected patients. Now, one thing I also want to make clear, though, is if you have high-risk disease and you're MRD positive, we really did see benefit to high-dose melphalan. So melphalan matters. The question is, does it necessary for everyone? doesn't appear so. And at the same time, we also have to be re recognize some of its challenges.